Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 34. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download this workbook. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we're talking about typical values. Typical values. Oh, that's average. And we want to look at a bunch of uh, examples in this video. In last video we just saw an introduction to mean, median, mode, but we're also going to see weighted mean, geometric mean, and trimmed mean. These are all averages, ways of getting a typical value, one value from a set of values, so we can use it to talk about uh, all the data points or use it for budgeting or other things like that. Now, let's just start off, let's talk about uh, mean. What do you do? You sum up all the values, so we have an apartment rents, and then count all the values, and then take sum divided by count. So the long way, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt equals, that's for auto sum, click on the top cell, Control Shift down arrow, and then watch this, I'm going to hit Shift Enter. Shift Enter is nice because it puts the formula in the cell and jumps the cursor up. And when you're down at the bottom like that, that's just a nice little trick. Now let's count equals count. Now, there's a bunch of count functions in Excel. Count is the one that counts numbers. And in 2007 it says, it's great, it has this little screen tip, counts the numbers. If you were to count up, uh, it counts numbers of cells that are not empty, not empty. So that one is good for if you're counting words and numbers. We want count. I'm going to click on the top cell, control shift down arrow, and then I'm going to do that trick again, shift enter. Again, shift enter does the same thing as enter except for it pushes the cursor up and when you're way down at the bottom of the screen like we were, that's a nice little keyboard shortcut. Mean? Oh, how mean is this? We simply take our sum divided by our count, and that gives us our arithmetic mean. We have one value that represents all the data points. Now, uh, in our next video, we'll talk about standard deviation, which is a great measure to tell you if your mean actually fairly represents your data points. Because remember, this is like one value that's standing in for all of the values while we write reports or do discussions or whatnot. Well, we don't have to do all this. I just had to do that one time to show you technically how the uh, average function is calculated. Equals average and simply highlight all the data, control shift down arrow, and then shift enter. Hey, why are these numbers different? Ah, don't get tricked by formatting. I'm going to come up here and increase my decimals, either on the home tab or wherever you have your decimal button. Now I actually want to uh, use my scroll arrows here to scroll over to this one. I want to go back to this location and uh, scroll down here. I have lots of notes over here about mean, median, node, and percentile and all that. But down at the bottom, I just want to look. Here is the official notation statistics. That is, this is for sample mean, and we're going to be mostly dealing with sample data. This is pronounced x bar equals sigma x sub i, that means all the individual data points, so you add them all up, and then because this is a sample, we use a little n. If we are doing population data, we use this, uh, not x bar, but mu, the Greek letter mu. And then we take sigma x sub i divided by big N, that means this is the population. So that's just the official notations in statistics class. Let's go back over uh, to typical values. Now, I um, want to do median. Now remember, median is great when you have extreme values, like for salaries and the best example, real estate values. Now I want to show you how to do it by hand, and then we'll do it um, uh, using the median function. I'm going to highlight all of this data, click at the top, control shift down arrow, and then control C to copy. Now I'm going to use my scroll bar and scroll back up here. I'm going to paste it right here. Control V. By the way, uh, any of you uh, raise your hands if you can tell me why I have little uh, uh, columns separating all the data. Oh yeah, that's right, because if I were ever to sort this, like I'm going to do right now, if this data is touching any other data, the sort won't work right. So you got to be very careful when you do data analysis things like sort, uh, you have data for uh, filtering or whatever. 
you want a, a, a row all the way around of blanks. Now, median by hand, you sort your data list. And the way sorting works is field name at the top, data below, right click. This is in 2007. And then sort. Um, hmm. Let me do it this way. All right, right click, sort. Now it'll come off. There's an A to Z, a Z to A. And earlier versions, of course, those buttons are, were on the toolbar. I'm going to say smallest to largest. Now, uh, what I really want to do is move this whole setup, or actually, we'll do it over here. I'm going to type NO for number, and then enter, 1, enter, 2, enter. Highlight the 1 and the 2, and watch this. If I double click, that's the fill handle right there, and this is the white selection cursor. If I move my white selection cursor over that fill handle, that's a crosshair or an angry rabbit, as I like to call it. Double click that and send it down. It sends, because we established a pattern, add one. When I double clicked and sent it down, it added numbers all the way down. Now, what is median? It is a sorted list. And you have to pick the one in the middle. Now, how many do we have? We have 70. What is 70 divided by 2? 35. So we have to go up to 35. Oh, is 70 an even number? You bet it is. So what do we have to do? We have to find 35 and 36. And then we have to take the average of these two. And that is how you do it by hand. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do it over here, because remember, that's a data set. These numbers will stay with there. So I'm going to say uh, median by hand equals average. And then I'm going to highlight 35 and 36, the two data points. And that's exactly what we got when we used the, uh, the function um, median, or what we're about to get, $1,148 and $50. All right, so the median is obviously convenient because you don't always want to sort your data, do it by hand, count, and all that kind of stuff. Equals median. And I'm going to highlight my data, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then Shift Enter. If I increase the decimals, you can see, sure enough, we got the right value. Again, we need a typical value that can be used to represent all the data points when there are extreme values, uh, median and mean are good for quantitative data. Now, the mode, as we mentioned before, is good for categorical data. How in the world would you do the mode by hand? Well, let's first calculate the mode here. It's the one that occurs most frequently, equals mode, and it is a type of average. Click there, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then Shift Enter. Here's the problem. There can be lots of modes. and if uh, as we're going to find out in a second when we do this by hand, there, there are there's more than one mode, and the mode function doesn't tell you that. All right, so how do you do mode by hand? Um, the, the easiest way is to do a pivot table. Now, there are some duplicates in here, like 789 is there more than once. I don't know where else it is in the, uh, there's 789. So it's somewhere else here. But if we do a pivot table, and I actually have just like in the red, I had the descriptions for how we did this. Here's some descriptions uh, for how to do mode by hand. We could do advanced filter unique records, which we saw in an earlier video, and then use count if, and then sort descending. But forget it. The pivot table is the fastest way to go here. So I'm going to click my cursor somewhere in this data set. And notice, is there a blank in between this data set and then these calculations? You bet, because the pivot table wouldn't work if there wasn't that extra row. I only made it real small so I could fit everything on the screen because of the video. All right, pivot table. We go to Insert, Pivot Table, Pivot Table. I'm going to say on a new worksheet, it got the data set, click OK. Here's all there is. There's only one field, right? You drag that into the row labels, and instantly, you, uh, the same thing as advanced filter unique records, you get a list of unique records. Then you drop it a second time down here, and boom, just like that. What? It's adding them up. No, we need to change the function. So I'm going to right click. Uh, value field settings, because these are fields. And then we're simply going to change the function from sum to count, and then click OK. Now I'm going to 
uh, sort this, and guess what? This is a pivot table, and you can just sort right in the middle of a pivot table. Right click, sort, and I'm going to say largest to smallest because I want to see the largest frequency at the top. And sure enough, look at that. How many modes are there? One, two, three. Trimodal or multimodal. If there was only two, it would be called bimodal. Now, later when we talk about the shape of distributions, it will become uh, actually. This sheet, I move this right here. Uh, I'm going to click outside so the field list. By the way, if you want the field list back, you click right there. I'm going to click right there. Now I'm going to double click this and call it uh, Mode Pivot Table. I'm going to go back over to uh, this uh, tip typical value one. So we did mode by hand. Now, mode, median, and mean, or average in, in Excel, those three will come in handy later when we talk about the shape of the distribution of data. So we'll come back to mean, median, and mode. Now,